Today we're taking an in-depth look at NFTs, perhaps the only thing more unbelievable to me right now than this channel surpassing 500,000 subscribers is this single piece of artwork that sold for $69.5 million. Hey guys, my name is Sheldon Evans, welcome back, or if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on all of those bell notifications. In celebration of this channel hitting this milestone, I will be minting my very own first NFT at the end of this video to show you guys exactly how it's done. So. Let's get right into it. I'm sure by this point you know what NFTs are, but if you don't, essentially they are non-fungible tokens, meaning that they cannot easily be interchanged with other assets that are similar to it. For example, if you have a dollar bill and I have a dollar bill, I can easily swap you that dollar bill or any other dollar bill in existence because they represent the same thing and are essentially the same item. However, if I, you, or somebody else signs one of those dollar bills, it adds a unique identifier or a unique aspect to that dollar bill, making it no longer a fungible asset. It's now non-fungible because it cannot be easily interchanged for other dollar bills because it represents something else and has a unique value to it. That is all this is except on the blockchain, meaning that the scarcity, the authenticity, and its sales history can all be verified on the blockchain in seconds. And that is what makes NFTs so special. So the first thing we're going to be looking at today is an artwork by Beeple that sold for $69.5 million, which I'm sure you've heard about by this point, but I just want to make some comments on it. So obviously this artwork is not a single artwork. It's a combination of over 5,000 artworks or 5,000 to be exact, which are the first 5,000 days by an artist known as Beeple. Now this guy has been creating art daily for the past 13 years, now even longer, and has taken all of those artworks together put them into a collage and auctioned it off on Christie's, which is one of the biggest, oldest, most reputable auction houses in the world. This is a really good thing because it means that the traditional world is looking towards digital art. It is no longer just the physical medium or the physical realm of artwork that is giving value or getting value, but also digital art. And we can see how valuable this art is getting, for example, with this being sold for this value right now. This artist, Beeple, is now the third highest valued living artist only after Jeff Koons and David Hockney, meaning that he is one of the most valuable artists in the world, a digital artist in the world of NFTs. Now this brings into question, is it simply because he is a fantastic artist or is it that this work has some sort of story behind it? What gives value to art? And that is what we have to ask ourselves when we're trying to value these NFTs and discuss if they are worth the money that is being put into them. Now, it does not matter what I say or what you say about the value of this artwork. If you think it is worth this or I think it is worth that, it does not matter. The market has given this artwork the value that it has right now. Just purely based on the fact that one person out there is willing to spend this amount of money on this makes it this valuable. It does not matter if somebody else wants to purchase it for more or less than this, the current valuation is what the last person paid for it. And we can see that because it's verifiable on the blockchain as well. When valuing artworks, we don't have to look at purely the blood, sweat and tears that went into creating that artwork or the value of the raw materials. Often you are buying more than just the artwork itself, you are buying the story of the artwork as well as the artist. For example, an artist that has a strong history, a large following, maybe is notorious, and has a proven track record of making high-valued artworks would increase the value of any future artworks by that artist. And again, comes into play scarcity here. Because these are the first 5,000 days by this artist, there will never be another first 5,000, there can only be one first meaning that the value of this will be driven up. Sure, additional artworks may be worth less, but the first and last artworks are often the most valuable. For example, if people were to pass away, hopefully that never happens, or eventually it will, but hopefully not in the near future, this artwork will become worth way, way more than it currently is, as has happened with previous artists in the past. When you look at artists and their work, how much it increases in value after they die, that just gives a significance to the value of scarcity because there will never be new artwork by this notorious artist, his previous works will increase in value. So that is something that you have to look at when looking at NFTs that you're looking to purchase yourself or that you're trying to value. Will there be more? Will this person create more of the same artworks and drive down the value of their previous artwork? Or will they be able to innovate and create new exciting pieces that draw the attention of crowds and masses around the world? Now, obviously NFTs are very hyped right now. If we look at the overall global search term, you can see that the trends right now show that NFT is around the 99 to 100 range in terms of search volume, meaning that it is at the all time high of its search volume. So perhaps some of these artworks are overvalued simply because they are 
having the word or the token or the ID NFT attached to them. Maybe they wouldn't be as valuable if they were simply digital artworks, which we have seen in the past. Many artists have not made much money from their work, but until recently with the invention of NFTs or the acceptance of NFTs rather, we see that these artworks are being sold for hundreds, thousands, even millions of dollars because the term NFT is being attached to them and they are becoming NFTs or non-fungible tokens. That too is simply adding to the story or adding to the narrative and driving the prices of these artworks up. For example, this first Beeple artwork was sold through a traditional auction house. The first NFT sold through this traditional auction house, Christie's, means that the value of this would go up. So there are many aspects that go into generating value or increasing the price of these NFTs. Now, I don't only want to talk about this one piece of art. We have a lot to talk about today. So if you search for NFT anywhere online, you'll see that there are tons of people getting to NFTs, tons of in industries getting into NFTs that is not necessarily just associated with art. In fact, there are many more uses for NFTs other than art. And that is what we're going to talk about today. So one that I want to make a particular mention about is the NBA Top Shot. What is happening here is you are purchasing an individual moment in sports history. And these are going for millions of dollars, well, thousands of dollars and millions of dollars in total transactions. Now, essentially all you're buying is a video recording of a notable moment in sports history. Now, if you're thinking, why would you purchase this if you could simply watch it as I'm doing right now on this tweet, why would you want to spend $208,000 on this? Well, it comes down to the psychology of humans. Humans want to own things. That ownership comes with bragging rights. It comes with ego. It comes with a sort of monopoly. If I own something and I'm the only one that owns it, I have monopolized the ownership of that item. So in order for you to get it from me, you have to pay the price that I name, meaning that its value can increase infinitely until I'm happy to transfer the ownership to you in exchange for what I'm willing to accept. And again, if you don't think it's valuable, then this is not for you. There will be a niche for you where you find or see value in something that you're willing to spend your hard earned money on. Just because you don't see value in particular NFTs doesn't mean that NFT doesn't have value. The value is given to these items by the market. And we can see this in artworks like this by Banksy. Now, you may have heard about this as well, but essentially what happened was a very notable artist known as Banksy, an anonymous artist who makes art that comments on day-to-day -day life and society, has destroyed one of these artworks and minted it as an NFT, meaning that the real-world item, the real-world artwork, has been destroyed and an authentic, verifiable version has been created on the blockchain. Now, again, this comes down to how humans value things. This digital version is worth more than the original artwork. Why? Because there is a story to this. A Banksy was burned and destroyed and an NFT was created in its place. That is a notable moment in history. It's the first of its kind. It's one of the most important pieces that go into the NFT pub puzzle or the NFT history. Therefore, the value of this artwork, setting a moment like this in history, setting a precedent and commenting again on the future psychology of humans. And it's interesting as well because the artwork that was destroyed is known as morons. And in that artwork, as you can see here on the screen, it is a drawing or a, a painting of an auction room where the auctioneer is auctioning off a piece of artwork that says, I can't believe you morons actually buy this SH1T, which is very impressive. And again, plays on the psychology of humans and what humans think about artwork and how the entire art industry is basically based on speculation, which is what I believe the NFT art market is based on right now. Sure, most of it may be highly overvalued, but again, that does not matter. Human specula speculating on the price of things has been around for centuries and will continue. Sure, we may be in a bubble as well. We don't know when this will pop or if it ever will. But all I'm saying is that if you have to look at all of these different variables when looking at the value of these artworks before you shut it down and say that it's not worth what it's currently valued at. And this isn't the first time Banksy has done something as interesting as this. Previously in the past, before these NFTs became such a hype with generating NFTs as artwork, Banksy auctioned off a piece of his artwork, which is known as Girl with Balloon, which we can actually see the guy torching this artwork wearing on his shirt here, which was auctioned off. And as the final bid was placed, they heard a noise in the room, many people started looking around, and the artwork then shredded itself. Now this is one of those moments that I've just spoken about that is adding to the story of the initial artwork, right? This artwork then increased in value instantly after this auction ended. So whoever won this auction was instantly in profit because this part of this artwork is now part of the story. 
These pieces of the artwork that were shredded are now more valuable than the intact piece of art because there's history to this. There's a story behind it and most people are willing to pay for that. And that drives the price or the value of these artworks up. Now let's talk about time, age, and scarcity. So the Twitter CEO, Jack Dorsey, auctioned off his first tweet for $2.9 million. And the first tweet was just a tweet of him saying, just setting up my Twitter. Now why this is important is Jack Dorsey is the CEO of Twitter and he auctioned off his first tweet. There's a story to that, to that. There's a narrative to that. There will never be another first tweet by Jack Dorsey. There will never be another first tweet on Twitter by the CEO of Twitter. So there's an interesting aspect here. Whether you think this is worth $2.9 million doesn't matter at all. Somebody was willing to pay that. And perhaps additional tweets that come out in the future will never be as valuable as this tweet that was auctioned off because there will never be another one like this. This was the first of its kind. The same with the Beeple auction, the same with the Banksy auction. There are many of these artworks acquiring value because they are scarce, one of a kind and first to the party. We also have Sophia the robot who is joining the NFT craze and creating her own NFTs. Now again, here's another narrative or another story behind these artworks. She's creating an artwork. She's an AI robot. You've probably seen her on TV talking to celebrities and saying how humans are going to be destroyed. She is now creating her own NFTs or artwork. And the thing with this is again, she's the first doing this, perhaps additional artworks in the future by other AIs, by other robots, or even by her, by the a Sophia robot won't be as valuable as this first drop of NFTs because it is the first as well as the last. Maybe there will be another one and it will be the last, therefore driving the value of it up. These are all the things that go into valuing these artworks that we can't really predict or determine what the value of something is until the market will, is willing to bid on it and then give it value in the end. Now, I'm more interested in the long-term use of NFTs. Sure, the speculative hype around these artworks is quite high right now, and we see a lot of value being pumped into the market thanks to this, but there are actually more important uses for NFTs that will be around for a long time. For example, a St. Louis home was auctioned off as an NFT on Mintable. An investor, Ivan Malpica, listed a share in a property for 42 ETH, which is about $76,000 at the time of writing, the NFT fractional ownership of this fully gutted rehabbed home. So this is where NFTs can be very important in tokenizing real world assets, not just homes, but perhaps any asset that is ever sold, any item that is ever sold. So let's say that you are buying a branded item, perhaps a Sony camera or a Nike pair of shoes. How do you know that it is the original? Sure, you may be purchasing it from the Nike shop, but maybe you want to buy a second hand on the secondary market. How do you know that that is truly the original? Well, if there's an NFT minted in its place on the blockchain, there will always be a track record of sales, of history, of transfer of ownership of that real world item. And I see this is where the use case to NFTs being very, very important in the long run. We can tokenize pretty much every real world object and asset on the blockchain to track its history of ownership and movement and value over time. And this I believe will be implemented over time in many supply chains across the world. Just as I've said earlier in the video, humans value ownership and authenticity. You want to know that what you're spending your money on is worth what you're spending your money on, or at least the agreed upon value. Sure, it may not be worth that. Bitcoin isn't worth the value it is. Ethereum isn't worth the value it is. And I will get many people shooting me down for this, but most things are overvalued right now purely because we are in a bull market. So things are getting driven up in value over time. But if humans agree that something is valuable and something has value to it, that is the value. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. And while we may be tokenizing these real world assets, and I see this as a major use case for NFTs, one industry that I believe is about to be disrupted permanently by NFTs is the music industry. And the reason for this is, if you're wondering why the music industry is talking about NFTs beyond cryptocurrency apps, beyond democratization of patronage is one simple glaringly obvious fact. Music is worth way more than its current price in the modern world and corporations are strangling artists. Musicians currently only get 12% of all revenue in the music business. And you can see that from this chart here, where the artist's revenue is way smaller in comparison to the record label, to the platform costs, to managers, to the cost of concerts, collection fees. Everyone else is getting a cut by the hard work from this artist. This artist that has put in the time to generate this magical art, this hard work, their life's work, and they're only getting 12% for what they are creating. This is completely wrong in my eyes. For many, many years, we've had starving artists driving beauty into the world and creating amazing things for us 
yet they aren't getting given the value that they deserve. And now that is going to change with NFTs. So I encourage you to go read this Twitter thread by Michael Jollett yourself. He also says, how many times has a song felt like the most important thing in the world to you? Like the artist understands something and you just want to be in their world. That value is not expressed in the 0.3 cents per stream Spotify pays an artist to maximize Spotify's profits. 70% of artists' income come from live performances. As someone who had to cancel 70 dates last year due to the panorama, I can tell you artists everywhere are feeling the pain. Incidentally, during this time, Spotify profits went up. This is so wrong that Spotify's profits went up, yet artists got paid less because 70% of their income comes from live shows. When in fact, most music is being listened to around the world all day, every day, and that money is going straight to these platforms and not to the artists. And NFTs can change that because we can now tokenize that work and then pay the artist in perpetuity royalties from that artwork because the track record and sales history can be verified on the blockchain. Now into an NFT, you can also bake royalties, meaning that any sale in the future, 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever you set at the get-go is then paid back to the original artist. This cannot be done and hasn't been done ever before. That artists are now being rewarded in perpetuity for their artwork. Sure, there are royalties paid in certain industries, perhaps maybe even the music industry with radio stations and, and platforms paying artists, but it's nowhere near what they deserve. Now, artists can take control of that. Physical art, digital art, as well as music can take control over that and get their royalties paid directly to them. And we can see that happen in real time. And we can see the history and the sales value of those artworks on the blockchain. And here's an example of where this is happening right now. So history has been made. The auction for the world's first tokenized album has finished. Built by OGN is powered by DShop. Blau sold 33 unique NFTs for a total of $11.6 million. This is a new record for a single NFT auction. Well, obviously, people surpassed this quite majorly, but this at the time was a record. Now, Blau is a world-renowned DJ and has been creating music for many, many years. Recently, he was rewarded for that hard work when he auctioned off his Ultraviolet album on the three-year anniversary. Blau fans placed bids on 33 NFTs during the auction period. Winners will be able to redeem these for special edition pieces of vinyl and unreleased music. I'm excited to help give power back to artists. This is the first step in a longer mission to connect artists directly to their fans and allow artists to capture the value they create in the world, Blau says, and I completely agree with this. Artists are finally getting the value that they deserve. I believe we will see more and more of these happening regularly. There are many people hopping on the bandwagon of this and many other artists and mus musicians also wanting their share of the pie, which is perfectly fair. We see Crypto.com launching their very own NFT platform with exclusive content from Snoop Dogg, Aston Martin, and Lionel Richie. So head of the launch crypto.com has lined up some names to collaborate with in order to create and release NFTs on their platform. They include the above mentioned artists that I've just spoken about. Now with these top end artists and musicians creating their own NFTs, often there has to be some gatekeeping when this happens. So given that the NFT platform is invite only, it is unlikely that users will be able to mint and sell their own NFTs at launch. So while there are many different networks and marketplaces out there like OpenSea, Rarible, Foundation, Maker's Place, and many, many more, which are platforms that allow you to create and mint your own NFTs, which we'll do in a second as well. There are some platforms that are invite only. Foundation is one, for example, as well as now crypto.com also creating their own invite only platform. And something very similar happened with Blau. This is a unique NFT auction site here. This is the site that was used to auction off Blau's artwork, and it is on his official website, nft.blau.com. You can go and have a look at it. And this was created by a program or a platform known as Origin Protocol. Now, I've spoken about Origin Protocol in my Patreon, and I believe that they're going to be one of the leaders in NFTs because of what they're doing for artists. They are creating customizable experiences for these artists. Now, while these A-list and B-list celebrities are looking to get into NFTs, many of them don't want to simply create their NFTs and list them on just any old marketplace. The problem with these sites like OpenSea, Rarible, and so on, is that anyone, you, I, and pretty much everyone else can create an NFT and sell it on these platforms, meaning that a lot of these artworks, NFTs, and so on, get lost in a sea of other art and becomes worthless. Again, the scarcity aspect here comes into play, and when there are tons of these flooding the market, it drives the value down. So now if you are a famous celebrity or you have some sort of notoriety behind your name, perhaps you don't want to get lost in the sea of other artists and random artworks. So instead, you want to build and control every creative aspect 
of that launch or of that buyer's experience. The same thing goes with Nike, Puma, and many of these other brands who create unique buying experiences on their websites. For example, if you go to nike.com, you can customize the shoes to your liking. That is a unique buying experience that you couldn't do if you were to purchase Nike on Amazon or eBay. Now, what I think Origin Protocol is doing is doing this right. Now, obviously, thanks to this initial launch and record setting launch with Blau, they've got a lot of attention right now. If you go to their website right now, you can see that you can sign up if you're interested in running an NFT sale on their platform, which I'm sure they're overwhelmed with inquiries of artists and people trying to run NFT sales on their site. Now, the problem with this is that they're essentially becoming gatekeepers at this point. They're taking away the decentralization or the openness of creating NFTs for the world or anyone being able to create their own unique NFT experiences. And this comes with a game, right? This comes with a platform. They cannot simply cater to everyone and create these unique experiences for every single person who applies to drop NFTs on their platform. And they know this and they've taken this into account and they've released an update and they understand that in the future, they need to be able to offer these unique customizable experiences to anyone and allow them to customize it themselves. And this is why I'm so incredibly interested in this project because they understand that they have to cater to more people. They cannot be these gatekeepers because it goes against decentralization. They are controlling who comes onto their platform. So instead what they've done is they've created something known as a D shop, which in fact I actually use in my own business and so do some of my friends. And essentially what it is, is the Shopify of crypto. So we have spoken about on this channel about accepting crypto payments and how that is so important to the global adoption of cryptocurrency and Origin understands that. So they've allowed you to create your own D shop, which is a decentralized shop, customizable open source e-commerce platform built on decentralized web, get started for free and launch your store in a day. So and it literally took me minutes to set up my own store and start accepting crypto payments. You simply link your wallet, set up a storefront and anyone can purchase through that storefront. I started using this to accept consulting calls through my business and accepting the payment in crypto, you can do this for any other item as well. They were quite surprised when I told them that I'm actually using it to accept calls because that's not what it's designed for. It is designed to sell e-commerce products, which is even bigger industry than the music industry as a whole. If you look at Shopify and Amazon, Shopify is currently valued at $129 billion. Amazon currently valued at $1.5 trillion. The global retail e-commerce sales worldwide is currently sitting at over $6 trillion dollars. That's $6,388 billion. That is a lot of money being pumped into global e-commerce. And if some, some of that transfers over to the NFT industry and the NFTs online, we will see a huge influx into NFTs, even more than we're seeing currently. If we go over to see the overall volume in NFTs right now, it's only at half a billion dollars. The overall volume in the music industry is $23.1 billion. This is such a small number in comparison to what can be flowing into the NFT e-commerce market in cryptocurrency. There is so much room to grow in this industry that it's actually unbelievable right now. Even though some people are saying that we're at the peak, and as I've said before, many things are very overvalued in crypto, I do believe that there's still a lot of room to grow here. With $6 trillion predicted to be happening in global sales by 2024, $200 million market caps on some projects, $50 million market caps on some projects, even 10, five, 10 billion dollar market caps on some projects is incredibly small compared to the amount of money that actually exists in the world. If one project, which I say this many times, or one company such as Amazon can be worth $1.5 trillion or the global market cap of all cryptocurrencies combined at $1.7 trillion, that just shows you how early we are to this. Now, with that being said, it is time to mint my very first NFT. I'm going to be using a site called Rarible. You can simply visit rarible.com. There are many different platforms, as I mentioned, OpenSea, Maker's Place, Foundation, and so on. Some of them require invitations. Some of them are exclusive, whereas Rarible is open to anyone. So you can go to rarible.com, simply click, click create. First, you're going to create an account and you're going to need an Ethereum wallet. If you don't have one yet, such as MetaMask, then you're going to hit create single item. I'm going to be using a photograph that I took a while ago of the Milky Way galaxy. This is the photograph that I will be minting into an NFT. I went up a mountain in near zero degree weather in order to capture this photograph at around 2 a.m. in 2018. I have just taken this photograph as well and animated it slightly for the NFT's purpose as well, since many NFTs are animated and it's quite fun to do that. And I've animated the Milky Way galaxy all flowing or trippy cool-like. So. I'm going to take the original mp4 file and select it here. I'm then going to select the cover, which will be the JPEG image 
that I've just taken. Then I'm gonna put it up for sale. You can set an instant sale price, but I will put it up for auction so people can bid on it. I'm going to select Rari token. I'm going to name it Milky Mountains. Then I'm gonna add a short description explaining what the artwork is and why I'm creating it. Just as I said before, it's for in celebration of my 500,000 subscriber marker. Then I'm gonna add some info to it, such as the resolution of the item, which is 1920 by 1080 full HD. Then I'm gonna simply go ahead and click create item. You're going to have to approve a transaction, click confirm, it's gonna cost you some gas. Then you can upload the files, which are the files that I selected previously. This is also gonna cost you a fair amount of gas, which is why I said there are many other blockchains coming out that will save on this and save on gas fees and perhaps overtake Ethereum in the terms of the NFT market because many artists don't want to spend 50 to $100 in order to create their artwork. So I'm gonna go ahead and click confirm. This may take a few moments depending on how long this transaction takes to go through. I'm gonna click start. I'm going to sign the transaction and the item has been minted. Go ahead and click refresh. And just like that, my new NFT has been created. You can simply go see it right now on Rarible. I'll place a link to this down in the description below. I hope you guys liked the video. If you do want to learn more about NFTs, you can also visit OpenSea's NFT Bible and read about it here. Read about the history of fungibility and NFTs on the blockchain if you want a more in-depth guide as to what they are and to understand the technicalities and history behind them. I suggest you go give that a read because it is quite informative. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did like it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up, and as always, I shall see you in the next video. Cheers.